Hello friends, in this video we will talk about maths behind K-means algorithm. So, talking about the theory of K-means algorithm, I have already uh, explained the concept behind K-means algorithm in one of my previous videos. So, if you can go to my YouTube channel, you will find out this particular video named as K-means algorithm. So, here I have explained K-means algorithm with a very simple example. So, those who want, they can go and they can refer this video before uh, understanding the maths behind K-means algorithm. So in this video, what we are going to talk about is, I will again, once again, give you an overview of the K-means algorithm itself. So we'll talk about the algorithm itself here, the, the first point. Next thing what we are going to discuss about is the metrics which are used for K-means algorithm. That is, uh, there are two metrics which are used to find out the distances between the points and the centroid in K-means algorithm. Uh, the first distance which K-means algorithm makes is of Euclidean distance. So we will talk about what do you mean by Euclidean distance. We will talk about that. One more distance which is used for finding out the uh, one more matrix which is used to find out, find out the distance between the points and the centroid is called as Manhattan distance. Right. So here in this case we will talk about Euclidean distance. We are going to make use of Euclidean distance to find out the distances between the centroids and all the other data points of the data. Right. Third point and the most important is elbow method we will see right elbow method is the method which is actually used to select the value of k in k means algorithm right we already know uh, the number of clusters in k means depends on according to k means depends on the value of k so how to decide about that particular value of k so we will talk about elbow method for the same right so uh, to start with let me just give you a overview what k means algorithm does right suppose we have data points right suppose these are the data points which are there right and these are the data points suppose here are here are the data points which are given so this is the graph suppose we have our for our, for our data points something like this right now what kevin's algorithm does is the ultimate objective of kevin's algorithm is to divide this particular data into groups or it is also called as clusters right so first group may contain Suppose it contains uh, these data points, right? And another group may contain, suppose, these data points. So, actually, what we have done is we have divided the data into two clusters. Clusters are also called as group. So, in this case, this is the first cluster and this is another cluster. So, this is what ultimately we are going to get with the help of KBS algorithm. Okay. Now, how to do that? For that, what we will do is we will try to see the steps of KBS algorithm. Okay. Now, let us talk about the steps uh, of KBS algorithm. First step of Kevin's algorithm says we need to select k value. Right? So select k value. Right? So you can select k value as 2, 3, 4, anything you want. Right? So how to decide about that k value? We will talk about that in case of elbow method at the end of this particular video. Right? Suppose in this case, if I select value of k as 2, so what, I, so what am I going to get at the end? I am going to get two numbers of clusters. Right? So as, as I already told you, Numbers of clusters which you are going to get finally depends on the value which is selected from k. So select the k value. This is the first step of k means algorithm. Next step of k means algorithm is initialize centroids randomly. So how to find out those centroids that we talk about? But first of all, you need to select centroids randomly. That is the second step of k means algorithm. Now the third step of Kevin's algorithm is find distance of points from centroids. Find the distance of points from centroid, which you selected in the earlier step. Okay. Centroid we had decided about in earlier step. Earlier step. Now, how to find out the distance of all the points from the centroids? For that, we are going to make use of Euclidean distance, right? This is what I was talking about earlier. Euclidean distance. Now, what is Euclidean distance? Suppose, let me tell you how you can find out the distance of between two points with the help of Euclidean distance. Suppose I have this point P1, right? And I have this point P2, right? P1 is suppose represented as x1, y1, and P2 is suppose represented as x2, y2. Now, we want to find out what we want to find out the distances these two points. So, 
Euclidean distance says that the distance between two points can be found out with this particular formula. So x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square. Take the square root of that. So under root of x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square. This is the formula which actually uh, which actually is used to find out the distance between any two points in the plane with the help of Euclidean distance. So that the distance which is uh, uh, which is this particular KNS algorithm is going to make use of to find out the distances between the points and the same points. Now the fourth step, what it says, select the groups and find mean value. Right. So you need to select the groups that is clusters. Group is the word cluster and find mean value. Now, what is this mean value? So that is nothing but that is mean value, that is mean of the square of distances. Right? This mean value is nothing but what? That is mean of square of the distances of all the points from the same points. Right? So we are going to talk about each and every step, each and every step with the help of a simple example also. So last step of chemical algorithm says that you need to repeat. These step third and fourth. Right, you need to repeat fourth uh, step number third and fourth till what? Till there is no movement, till no movement of points is observed. Right, no movement of points means what? That is the movement of points from one cluster to another cluster. Or, or uh, anyway, I am going to talk about all these points in. With the help of simple example, and then you will get. So these are the steps of K-means algorithm, right? So which are generally applied to, uh, to find out the numbers of clusters finally, right? So what I will do is I will try to explain all these steps one by one with the help of simple example. Let's suppose we have some data points, right? And now we will try to apply all those steps on this particular data points. Again, same example I will take. Suppose I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Suppose these are the data points. So I will, I will, I am just trying to take a simple example so that it will be easy for you to understand the concept. Right? <clears throat> Suppose these are the data points like this, somewhat like that. Right? These are the data points. Now, the first step. What first step said? First step says you need to select the value of k. Suppose in this case, let me, uh, let me select the value of k as two. Okay. So I am just trying to tell you about k means algorithm first. And then we will talk about elbow method, which is going to help you to decide about k. So we will see that at the end of this video. So let's suppose k is equal to 2. Okay. Now initialize centroid randomly. So what I will do is I will, I will initialize the centroids randomly. So first of all, let, let me select this particular point as centroid. Okay. As it is saying that you need to select centroids randomly first time, that's why I am randomly selecting the centroids. And let's suppose, let me select this particular as this particular point as a centroid. So, as k is equal to 2, that's why I selected only two centroids randomly. So, that was the second step of k. Now, third step says that find the distance of points from the centroids. So, how you can find out the distance of the point from the centroid with the help of Euclidean distance. So, in the earlier case, I have already shown you the formula of Euclidean distance. It means what? You need to find out the distance from the centroid. For this point, for every point, you need to find out this distance, right? So you need to find out this distance. You need to find out this distance. Again, the distance of this point from this centroid. So uh, this one, and similarly, find out this distance to the help of looking at this, right? And once you have found out all the distances uh, from the centroids for all the points, what you need to do is you need to uh, you need to or create the clusters or KMS algorithm is going to create the clusters depending on suppose suppose uh, this this points these points are nearer to this cluster C1 right let me name it as C1 and C2 suppose these clusters are nearer to cluster uh, these points are nearer to cluster C1 right and let me use some other color and suppose these points are nearer to Cluster C2. Right. Once it had it uh, found the distances, so what we have found out that 
the points which are colored as orange color are nearer to c1 and the points which are colored as this blue color are nearer to c2 it means finally we are going to get these two clusters so this is the first cluster as these points are nearer right and this is the other cluster suppose right as these points are nearer to c2 okay so this is what the fourth step says now what you need to do is next step says that you need to select the groups and find the mean value so for this particular group for the first cluster right you need to find out the mean value for this particular cluster find out the mean value of the distances and same you need to do for another cluster so it means that for suppose the mean value of the distances for cluster c1 for this first cluster is suppose this particular one right we suppose this particular one so what i will do is i will draw a new diagram and i will show you what will happen in the next step right suppose again 1 2 3 4 5 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 so suppose i i will try to keep same data points in the same way whatever it was there here now you can check how many points were there in the cluster 1 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 right so after find out finding the mean of the distances of this cluster we found out that this particular point is the new center this particular point is the new center right and same for cluster 2 also we found out that so earlier this was the centroid now the new centroid is suppose this one for c2 now find out the distances of all the points from this particular centroid suppose i i will name it as c1 dash and i will name it as c2 dash right so find out the distances these distances from the new centroid now and whichever the points which are nearer to this centroid they will come into one group and same is going to happen for another group suppose uh, we found out that these points are nearer to c1 dash and the remaining points are nearer to c2 dash so this is what your clusters are right these are your two clusters which you got after finding out the mean of the points from this cluster and this cluster the older clusters now new clusters you got like this one now what is the next step next step says that repeat step number 3 and 4 till there is no movement of the points now you can see that suppose uh, if you notice earlier suppose just assume that this point uh, this particular point this particular point was in c1 and now suppose we got that particular point in c2 right so some of the points you can check suppose we got this particular point from c1 plus the right so you need to repeat all these steps till what point till the point uh, there is no movement for for, uh, for all these data points to move from one cluster to another cluster or you need to continue the step number 3 and 4 till there is no new centroid formed right so what will be the next step again you need to take the mean value of the distances for this cluster and same mean value of the distances for this particular cluster right so you need to continue this step again and again till what point till there is no new cluster right till the cluster is not changing so uh, you are going to stop when you are going to get the same clusters in the next step right suppose i got the same cluster in the next step so finally i can say that okay this is what my result of kimis alumina is so this is the first cluster and this is the second cluster so this is how kimis algorithm actually works with the help of euclidean distance right so uh, if you want to make the things more clear what you can do, do is you can definitely go and refer my other video right this is what i have tried to actually give you a basic idea how kimis algorithm works now talking about how to select the value of k so let's move on further and let's talk about that to to select the value of k we use something called as elbow method so this particular kimis algorithm makes use of elbow method to select the value of k now what is that what is that elbow method let's talk about it let's suppose we have a loop from so let's suppose there is a loop from k equal to 1 to 20 and right? k is nothing but what k is nothing but number of clusters so let's suppose we are trying to run a loop from 1 to 20 now to work with this particular elbow method we are going to find out something called as wcss now what is this wcss wcss stands for begin cluster sum of square now it can be found out with the help of this particular formula 
summation i equal to 1 to n ci suppose this is the cluster plus all the points xi right and take the square of this thing right this is the formula which is used for finding out within cluster sum of square okay so we are going to do it for k equal to 1 that is cluster 1 then k equal to 2 and then k equal to 3 and so on till k equal to 20 in our case because we assume that we are trying to run loop from k from k equal to 1 to 20 so the value of this particular k actually depends on the data set right so as per the user requirement and as per the uh, available data we can make the changes in this particular uh, value of k that is loop i am talking about okay so suppose i have tried to run a loop from k equal to 1 to 20 so obviously the value of within cluster sum of square is going to be very very high for k equal to 1 that is one cluster because all the points we are going to uh, consider in that particular case and then we are going to find out the uh, sum of the squares within that particular cluster right and then again we need to find out the value of wcss for k equal to 2 that is there will be two clusters and then find out the value of within cluster sum of square and so on right so ultimately what we are going to get with the help of this particular wcss is we are going to get a graph so we are going to get something like this one, right so the graph will be on y axis you will be having within cluster sum of square and on x axis you will be having the value of k right so here there will be values of k that is clusters right and here you are going to put wcs that is within cluster sum of square or it is also called as inertia okay so why are, why are we doing all these things because you want to decide about the optimal value of k so let's suppose there are different values of k suppose k equal to uh, k is equal to 1 then k is equal to 2 k is equal to 3 k is equal to 4 5 6 7 and so on so in our case it is still 20 right so, so on and here suppose the within cluster sum of square suppose something like i am going to find out 0 0.5 then suppose here, here it is 1 then suppose here it is 1.5 1.5 suppose 2 something like 2.5 and 3 and 3.5 and so on right let's suppose for k is equal to 1 i got the value as 3.5 so i got this particular point suppose k equal for k equal to 2 i got some value uh, something like this one for k equal to 2 suppose i got this particular point. i got this particular point. now for k equal to 3 suppose i got the value of uh, wcs in as this one right and for k equal to 4 suppose this one k equal to 5 this one k equal to 6 and so on something like this one i am getting right so and so on this particular graph is going to continue to 20 maybe right so what we are going to get finally is we are going to get a graph like this. So I am going to draw a line with the help of these points and then again with the help of these points and then these points, join these points, all these points. Right? So this is what you got an elbow. So if you look at this particular diagram, the shape is like an elbow. So which value of this particular k you should select as an optimal value now? So we should select such a value where uh, such a value of k where there is sudden decrease in wcs or i can say that one should select k value that is number of cluster so that adding another cluster doesn't improve the total within cluster sum of square that is wcs is much better or we can say that the location of bend the location of bend or knee in the plot is generally considered as an indicator of appropriate number of clusters so you can find out that this particular value of k equal to 3 is indicating that particular value right so you can check after this point there is no uh, that much decrease in the uh, that much decrease in the value of the wcs right and that's why we can say that this is the optimal value of k right so obviously one can select another value may be possible uh, maybe this particular diagram is not that much accurate right but here again Tell you that this is the method which is actually used to select the value of k. So where wherever you are actually finding out the bend or a knee, right? That particular value you can say, see, from this particular point to this point, there were decrease. From this particular point to this particular point, again there are there are decrease now. And after this particular decrease in the WCS, the decrease is very, very small actually, right? That particular decrease is very, very small. So that's what I am trying to tell you. So wherever you say a bend or a knee from that 
that particular value will be considered as optimal value of k and hence this value will be optimal value of k so uh, that's what i wanted to, uh, i wanted to talk about the elbow method this is the method which is actually used to get the value of k in k means algorithm right okay? so uh, that's it from my side talking about elbow method in the next video i will uh, talk about the implementation of k means and uh, elbow method so i will see you off in the next video till then have a great day uh, have a great day ahead and thank you very much all.